next panel, please welcome the Minister of Tourism for the Government of Panama, Ivan Eskildsen, and the co-founder of Local Purse, Lola Akinmade Okerstrom, and the founder and executive director of Impact Travel Alliance, Kelly Louise, in conversation with Skift Global Tourism reporter, Leboit Lily Germa. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. So happy to see you here with us, Minister uh, Eskildsen. Truly thrilled to see you back at Skift. Uh, Lola as well, all the way from Stockholm, and um, Louise Kelly from uh, New York City. So uh, we're here to talk about the conscious traveler. It's become such a buzz phrase uh, and a reality. And it's actually come up already uh, today during our summit before we even got to the session, as you might have noticed. So increasingly, consumers are voting with their pockets. Uh, they want brands that support, you know, um, inclusivity, diversity. They also care about the environment, but they also want to support the host communities in the places that they visit. And all three of you have extensive experience with this um, and are actually uh, have amazing ideas on, on how the industry should tap into this segment going forward in the next 10 years and build a more sustainable uh, tourism future. So I want to start actually with uh, Kelly. Kelly, you founded Impact Travel Alliance a long time before this was even a buzzword um, in 2015. And it's a membership organization that basically brings together you know, uh, content creators and travelers who are, uh, you know, uh, conscious of, of all of these issues and want to um, push for sustainability and they're all over the world. You have different chapters all over the world. So I thought you'd be the perfect person to kind of, you know, give us a before and after insight into how much this trend has grown or this tendency, if you will, since COVID and what you've seen through your membership. Absolutely. Yeah. So like you said, um, we launched Impact Travel Alliance in 2015. Uh, we now represent the world's largest community for socially eco, socially and eco-conscious travelers and influencers. And um, I think what's really interesting looking at where we were in 2015 is we spent so much time just um, educating travelers about what was sustainability, how is it applied to travel, how do you incorporate it into any experience. And even though sustainable tourism isn't a new concept by any means, um, we were seeing this rise in consciousness of travelers who were interested in exploring in a way that had a positive impact on the world, but didn't necessarily even have the language or vocabulary to talk about how to do it, much less Google it and figure out how to apply it to their experiences. Right. So fast forward to the pandemic, um, and we actually saw our, um, our membership double. Um, in the midst of, of the global shutdown for tourism, which is pretty exciting that in an age where travel was brought to a standstill, um, we still saw an immense amount of growth within our community. And that's really a testament to um, the rise in not only awareness of sustainable travel, but and also an interest for it. Very interesting. So you're seeing more sort of content creators join or, or is now your is your membership now more diverse even in terms of the segment? Um, good question. Yeah, so we um, we have a mixture of we speak to both travelers as well as influencers and creators. Um, and that is a strategy that's really rooted in reaching the masses and amplifying the messaging behind sustainability. I think for so long, um, frankly, a lot of sustainable travel professionals have been preaching to the choir. Um, and so it's been a conversation amongst other people who have shared interests and shared values and our organization is very much rooted in amplifying that and going into the mainstream and talking about sustainability beyond just a niche. Um, so that comes to life in everything in terms of the chapter network that we have. I always say that we have a global mm -hmm. platform for local voices. Um, so we do have a presence across um, all of the continents, um, except for Antarctica, of course. Um, okay. And that's really important to us that um, as we're talking about sustainability, it's not about me sitting here in New York City and saying, this is what it is, this is how it should be. It's really um, that global platform for local voices to be able to collaborate and learn from one another. So just as much as our New York City chapter is pushing out messaging um, behind how we want our destination seen. We also have 
a chapter in Sao Paulo, one in Kathmandu, one in Hong Kong. And so they're really able to advocate um, from a local perspective, first and foremost. Yeah, really great. Minister Skiltsen, uh, you showed up on the scene in Panama and disrupted the tourism industry. Um, for the first time ever, the country has a, a master sustainable tourism plan for the, for the next five years. Uh, you've also rebranded uh, and, and specifically targeting only the conscious traveler for the most part. And your new tagline is uh, live for more, vive por mas. So we're going to roll the video um, now of your of your new um, brand. This is Panama, proud and perfect in its imperfections, teeming with its unapologetic authenticity, radiating with life, where the Caribbean meets the Pacific, old and new worlds collide, cosmopolitan and rural join together as neighbors. Panama is not the destination; it's the journey, a beacon for personal and cultural transformation, a place to discover more of what truly matters. More curiosity, more sensory stimulation, more connection, more self-discovery, more transformation. It's a place where we live for more. So to those who seek meaning, an adventure beyond expectations, and a place of belonging, it's a place where you can too. Panama. Live for more. Brilliant. So what I want to ask you is, you know, your background is very interesting. You came in as an entrepreneur, actually, and not from government. And you're making this huge bet on the conscious traveler for the, the future ahead for tourism. Why are you super confident about this segment? Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for this invitation and uh, happy to join you again. Um, and really, we, we are very confident uh, because we've done our research. Uh, we've been around to the main um, tourism uh, fairs and trade events uh, pre-pandemic, a few months before we started uh, office here in the, as a minister of tourism. And especially the last uh, six months or so where, where these uh, events have been reactivating, and what we've seen is more and more that travelers are looking to engage in, in these type of um, uh, significant experiences, purposeful. Um, and our research shows that uh, by this definition of the discerning traveler or the conscious traveler, more than 500 million visitors can actually fall under this category uh, worldwide. So, so for us, it's uh, even though it's a bet in the sense that um, it's a new focus for the country, and that's why we have uh, founded the, the new brand on this uh, sustainable tourism master plan um, to launch it uh, just recently. But, but again, uh, we believe that there's a, a whole new world out there. Not only the 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 market that we can be defined maybe under the Gen Z or the millennials, but also we believe that because these generations are also, let's say, influencing other uh, generations, now most uh, um, generations are also uh, looking um, towards these type of experiences. So, so I believe also the fact that because in Panama we've had several very significant, um, let's say, uh, accomplishments in our, in our natural, uh, with, our, with, with regards to our uh, conservation and our heritage, for example, we, uh, we have been uh, recognized as one of three countries in the world that are carbon negative right now. So when everybody's speaking about the importance of climate action, um, this certainly captures the attention of uh, discerning travelers knowing that Panama is one of three countries in the world. Uh, and then we have a bunch of other very extraordinary, um, um, let's say, characteristics that really capture the attention. So we are very confident that we'll be able to um, move forward and be successful with this strategy. If two or three really major projects or initiatives that are, that are super innovative that you're working on right now um, to really um, you know, provide new offerings for this, for this segment in 2022 or beyond. Perfect. Yes, yeah, so what, top three or two projects, I, I, I have to mention one is our Panama uh, Sustainable Tourism um, Community Tourism uh, Alliance, which we're calling uh, Pacto, PACT. 
Um, this alliance is um, with um, Foundation for Sustainable Tourism in Panama. We are working with communities because we believe that today's discerning travelers are looking to have that direct connection with communities and are looking to also positively impact local communities as much as possible. So um, with that, um, uh, let's say consideration from the market, we believe that in Panama we have this very rich cultural heritage with seven indigenous communities, um, Afro-Panamanian communities, and also the Spanish heritage that we have, that we believe that if we can uh, work with them, some of them are already prepared for tourism and, and they just need one small push um, to be even more prepared for the international market, but others need a lot, uh, some more work. So this right. project is, is about um, uh, working with communities um, and, uh, and in preparation for uh, receiving visitors. And, and another project I, I can mention sure. is one, one, pl one project we're calling uh, 1,000 Kilometers of Trails. Uh, basically, this project is about creating uh, new trails throughout the country um, and also um, adapting or, let's say, um, improving some existing trails. And we're, the important focus here is that uh, we're not only focusing, uh, we're, we're focusing on also highlighting the stories that the surrounding communities behind the, or around the trails can tell. So, for example, we have uh, the particularity that one of uh, one of our main trails or, or a series of trails throughout the country, since we are the narrowest points in, in, in the Americas, we have a great experience for uh, an ocean to ocean trail. So, for example, we have a trail that is has no carbon footprint uh, because it's done by bicycle, um, rafting and, and, and walking from the Pacific Ocean to the Caribbean also engaging with local communities, indigenous communities, and it's a great experience. Nice. So that's one of, one of the experiences we're, we're highlighting and, and many others that have- Amazing. Yes, I see you very busy. On, 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 I follow you on social media and I just can't keep up with all. <laughs> so uh, pushing both community tourism and adventure. So um, I'm gonna shift to, um, you know, still in marketing, but I, I'm seeing a new trend also, which is, uh, which is obviously also, you know, has been driven by all this conscious traveler. Uh, which is that tourism boards are, are starting to kind of like change their press trip itineraries, uh, what I call the new uh, conscious uh, press trip. Um, and Kelly, I know that you've been on one of these uh, recently with Visit Scotland, I think uh, around COP26. Um, and so I'd love to ask you sort of, uh, you know, how did the tourism board go about designing what would be in this conscious itinerary um, and, and what activities really briefly sort of were selected? Good question. Um, so I do think that there's this really cool shift that's happening. Traditionally, we've thought about sustainable tourism and really correlated it with ecotourism and um, destinations like Panama, for example. Everything that Ivan shared um, is very eco-focused, thinking about carbon neutral travel. And um, those experiences are great, but there's also opportunities for urban destinations as well to promote sustainability in their destination, um, which I think is really exciting when you start to think about that through the lens of as a traveler, um, you can go anywhere in the world and travel sustainably. It's really about embracing that mindset throughout each part of that journey. Um, so we partnered um, with Visit Britain and Visit Scotland to bring um, this press trip to life. And... Um, as you mentioned, it was ahead of COP26, which is the United Nations Climate Conference. And we put together an itinerary with them. Um, they really came in um, as the local on the ground experts and we really heeded to that advice. But then we had a very collaborative process to bring that to life of saying, okay. these are the things that we see resonate with our audience um, and going beyond just what we've traditionally talked about within sustainability and thinking about things um, like food tourism, um, um, opportunities to celebrate um, local cultures, thinking about um, visiting a distillery and how that can be a, a sustainable experience as well. So really incorporating kind of all of those different nuances around sustainability and bringing it to life through an on the ground immersive experience where we brought along um, four influencers with us um, and really had them experience urban sustainability okay. firsthand. 
Um, Lola, I know that, I mean, before I get to you next also, <laughs> thank you for your patience. I, I, you know, you were, you are an award-winning travel journalist as well. So you're very familiar also with the content creating side of this conscious wave. Um, and Scandinavia, I feel like has been way ahead of that curve, you know? Um, and so is there any change happening there in terms of the, uh, the kind of press trips or maybe, you know, the selection of content creators, has that changed at all? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, the change is really coming, especially the last kind of year and a half. It's uh, we've been diversifying the who gets to tell the stories of a place. Right. So before kind of all this happened, it was usually from a kind of narrow lens we viewed different destinations. So it's not just telling different stories about the place, but actually also diversifying diversifying who gets to tell the stories of the place as well. And then what I've been noticing is just involving more local voices in mm. telling their own stories. You know, sure. and I think kind of at the cusp, when we were kind of moving out of the pandemic a little bit, where there were lots of different uh, destinations who are coming up with campaigns, they were actually reaching out to locals to actually tell the stories of, you know, maybe we're reopening or, you know, this is how we are, this is what's going on here. And so I'm going to see a lot more of that where it's going to be a mix of not just diversifying the storytellers that come to tell the stories of a place, but making sure that the local voices are equally as important as those that kind of flying in to tell the story. Very interesting. So since I have you now, let's jump into, um, you know, the innovation and the shift that's happening in another sector, which is the tour operator, uh, you know, an artisan section, which you've been involved with your startup, Local Purse. Um, really a genius idea of sort of combining, you know, live shopping, live commerce with virtual travel and cultural connection, all of it through technology and people get to go to these places and also shop at the same time and interact. Um, how, I mean, what's the response been like from all the folks who've signed up for these experiences? What are you seeing um, in the promise of that? No, absolutely. And I think there's a reason why, you know, brands like Home Shopping Network and QVC have lasted for a long time, even though it's not maybe something you will normally use. It's because there actually is a segment of people that do enjoy buying, you know, kind of handmade things and uh, traditional items tied to a culture. And so a lot of people that have been discovering local purse, first of all, don't really know what, what it's about, what we're trying to do, yeah. but once they experience it, it makes sense, right? And what we're doing is we've been looking at this trend that kind of is gathering steam. It is the macro trend in the retail industry, so it's yet to stay. And we're looking at how can we bring that into travel to help make travel equitable again. You know, it's all about mm -hmm. equity for us. Yeah. And so those, that, so the reception to local pass has been great, you know, but also in terms of with anything that's new and disruptive, that's trying to kind of bring change, there's always going to be resistance as well. So that's kind of where we find us ourselves. Interesting. So there's lots of avenues for tapping into conscious travelers, um, yes. including those that maybe won't be comfortable um, getting on a plane for, for quite a few yeah. years yet. Um, and so, I mean, I wanted to ask you sort of what are the challenges in, you know, in the cultural connection part? Of, of, is there any challenge there and in running local purse? What, what are your main challenges and what do you what would you need at this time to push this to a bigger scale? No, absolutely. And, you know, like I said, once people, once they um, find out what it is and they actually experience it, they love it, it kind of reawakens that love for travel, that love co for connection. And it's actually a very responsible way of consuming, right? I don't like want to yeah. use the word consuming, but a more responsible way of kind of supporting local economies, but also getting something of value that also that the artisan, that respects the artisan's time and traditions. And so with any startup, the oxygen for any startup is funding, right? So yes. people love the idea. <laughs> they come, like recently somebody came uh, at a conference and was like, oh my God, I love this idea. Damn it, I wish I had it first. And so yeah. I told him, so I told him, oh, is that why you don't want to fund us, right? So, <laughs> so with any startup, you know, it's usually funding, but it's also exciting because it's kind of well-proven and market-validated and we know because it's also riding on this macro trend that if we can adopt it more in the travel industry, 
It really is about equity because it is yeah. we're trying to get people that normally wouldn't have access, you know, through their own e-commerce sites. We're talking about market vendors, you know, people that may not have their own e-commerce site. We're actually making sure, it exactly. more accessible, you know, yeah. to the audience. Yes. In many regions of the yes, world. Yes, absolutely. Um, and speaking of... Um, you know, disruption and, and startups. Um, Kelly, you're also part of uh, Fora Travel, which is uh, a new uh, uh, investor-backed startup in the travel advisor space, which uh, when I heard of it, um, I, I was really excited because I feel like, you know, not throwing shade on the travel advisor industry, but I feel like there's been a lot of need for innovation in that space, especially after COVID, and they play a huge role now you know, for, for consumers. Um, and so um, can you tell us what Fora Travel is exactly and, and how the model works? Absolutely. Um, so Fora is reimagining the travel advisor space with fresh eyes. Um, we're looking to build um, a space that's more inclusive, more tech driven, um, and really just empowers anyone to become a successful travel entrepreneur. Um, through whether that's a side hustle or a full-time role. Um, so we're empowering them with all of the tech, the tools, the resources, and the training that they need to, to get started to become a travel advisor. Um, and I think that the implications of that from um, what's happening within the advisor space is we're curating this community of more diverse individuals with different perspectives around the world. Um, for a traveler, that means that you can connect with someone who really gets you and understands you. It's not one size fits all travel or it's not cookie cutter mm -hmm. travel. You have that hands-on experience to really get um, exactly what you're looking for out of your travel experience. Very interesting. And how do you select um, creators for this? I mean, is, and, and do you provide training? I mean, how do you find these conscious travel advisors of the future? So anyone can do it, um, which I think is really exciting when you're thinking about the future of work. Um, if you look at the pandemic, for example, um, within the travel industry, women were disproportionately laid off. And so there's this huge opportunity here um, to look at um, spaces for women's empowerment and economic independence through becoming a travel advisor. So a lot of our mission is really rooted in um, those core visions and those core themes. Um, but to become a travel advisor, um, you could either be a professional advisor already and you just are excited by this idea, or you could be a newbie to the industry, um, head to our website, you'll see a little link that says, I want to become an advisor. Um, you sign up, you go through the onboarding process, and then we provide you with tools and training from there. So we have everything um, from destination trainings to talk about specific destinations and learn the ins and outs of what's happening there, connecting you with um, those local suppliers who are able to really give you more insight on that destination. And then we have a community platform for them to be able to communicate with one another. Um, so it's really, again, kind of taking this um, travel advisor and travel agent space and saying, let's bring it into 2022 uh, and talk about how we can really build it in a way that's um, better for consumers, better for the advisors and better for the industry. Yeah, fascinating. Uh, Minister Skiltsen, um, I want to go back to that point about communities. And I think that as Lola said um, a few minutes ago, it really is all about equity. And I think that the promise of the conscious traveler trend is the opportunity, you know, to spread the economic benefits to um, to the host communities in a more equitable way than than tourism has in the past, as we know. Um, and doing that, it requires really hard work of finding ways to integrate them um, into the chain, right? Um, and so I, I just wanted to know sort of what challenges have you specifically come across as you work with the different communities or collaborate with them, you know, public sector, with NGOs. I mean, it requires a lot of parties there. And, and so what are some of the difficulties um, and how can we bring community tourism into the mainstream? Sure. Uh, the, the, it's a great question. Uh, in, in our case, in Panama, because uh, we've been working uh, traditionally in the in the same segments in the as you know the last 10 20 years uh sun and beach cruise uh, cruise uh, the cruise uh, industry um mice or, or uh, meetings conventions and, uh, and events so uh, 
those sectors will continue to um, work uh, in Panama in the sense that we have already a good amount of demand created for them and we'll continue to push them. So the, I would say one of the main um, challenges has certainly been to get on board um, the private sector as much as possible because there, there has been a part of the private sector that has seen this opportunity. We're talking about that adventure travel represents almost $700 billion in expenses uh, worldwide. And we have great um, uh, products to, to offer to this market. So we've been working and creating these seminars and workshops and training to get together on the same table, the, the community leaders, um, tour operators, uh, tour guides, so different members of the, of the chain, the value chain, so that they can uh, accelerate the, the work they, uh, they do with each other. And, and, that they, and uh, that's also so that they can also see the opportunity that there is in the fact that, um, that we as, um, as a public sector uh, and as public policy, we're pu pushing forward in, in this agenda. And also uh, with our DMO, we're pushing forward this, um, this uh, branding or this uh, positioning. So the private sector can really um, benefit from from all this work so uh, that has been proving um, to move along uh, positively uh, but certainly it's um, I would say again that the main challenge has been to to get people uh, aligned in as far as the opportunity that we have seen and that the data is showing us it's so interesting when you're talking about alignment because I feel like especially in the Central America um, you know Latin America Caribbean regions, um, tourism is sort of, you know, um, there's there's a there's a mystery there, or sort of a, a wall, I'll say, uh, between you know the government um, and then the people, you know. So um, I've seen you uh, literally go into you know these communities and um, you know in, in training sessions on adventure. I think it was recently that I saw that talking to the guides and when training the guides, I guess. Um, and I thought it was a very, very interesting approach. I certainly haven't seen a Minister of Tourism in the region doing that that much. And so I wondered what response you're getting and, and, and are people surprised at this sort of hands-on approach? Yeah, well, I think uh, it, is, um, it is a bit surprising uh, in a way. Um, and, but, but it's also, it's creating good uh, positive vibe in the sense that people feel like they're being considered, that they're, um, you know, being uh, uh, considering in, the, in these initiatives and, and especially uh, working with this with these communities, the fact that some of them, even though Panama is a very small country and, and, and these local communities are accessible when compared to other places, um, they are they are still you know uh, a bit uh, further apart than the rest of the of the of the actors in the industry. So especially for them. And, and seeing that the the market and the demand is now looking uh, toward towards what they are, have to offer, uh, and that it actually helps them increase uh, their pride, uh, their local um, you know their local uh, identity, the local culture. Um, so the, the the feedback has been really positive. And, and for example, we're working mm -hmm. uh, on this event, Adventure Next. We're doing with Adventure Travel and Trade Association in February in Panama. Uh, Adventure Next Latin America will be hosted in Panama. So we all have like this very uh, also uh, close milestone uh, only a few months from now. We have a target to work towards that. We're receiving over 100 uh, tour operators and international businesses that are, that are going to be in Panama to learn about more about these experiences and, and get together and connect uh, with Panamanian uh, businesses. So so yeah, I think uh, this all this is creating positive momentum, and we're really looking forward uh, to continuing. Only uh, also besides this, besides uh, past this uh, February event, that's important for us. And all of the, of the ten, I know that you said the initial ten communities would be what you would bring into um, working to bring into the tourism chain. And and what's sort of the timeline on that? Any sense of how long that might take? Well, the the two the, the first ten pilot communities are. Um, are have a two-year uh, plan with them so it started uh, around uh, three four months ago so it'll go uh, a bit into uh, 2023 um, however we are also starting to 
work on a second degree of priority with some other communities um, just because um, some communities are close to the pilot community. So, so when we go do um, some training or do workshops in one community, it's easy to pull in other local communities that are close by. Uh, and also because um, there are other actions for example, I just came from Gunayala, San Blas, uh, and uh, we were working with this particular experience on the ancestral wisdom of in indigenous communities. And uh, so because that was the best community that w was able to offer this experience, then we, we decided we, we need to work with them. Um, so it's an extra uh, community as well. So we'll, we'll continue to be, to be uh, pulling in other communities, maybe as a second degree or priority. Um, but yeah, I think that answers the question you had. Great. Um, I, I want to ask all three of you, um, you know, I mean, we've had so many great insights here today. We've talked about the possibility of, of, you know, meeting the needs of this consumer segment through, you know, live commerce and, and, and virtual travel, um, new types of travel advisors who might connect easier with these younger generations. Um, and then, you know, an entire destination sort of you know, rebranding and going after sustainability, which is very inspiring, I'm sure, for the rest of the region. But what are the, where are the, the, the places in the industry where, you know, there could be more innovation, you know, to tap into this segment? Where are the gaps and the opportunities? In any order, you guys can just jump in. Well, I mean, again, we've identified one gap, right? Because, you know, with, uh, with local bus, Travel, we have to travel for our industry to function. So we have to physically be there, you know, for our industry to function. So we've kind of found this spot where we can actually help make travel innovative in some way, you know, by taking some things that could be moved online into a more digital space, into a digital environment. So I would say we've already identified one kind of gap within the travel industry, and that's what we're doing. That's, that's why we're working really hard, you know, with local us. That's a great point, Lola, particularly since we don't know when the next pandemic might come. Yes, I mean, yes. And it's, long -term too. It's, a, it's going to be a long term vitamin as well for the industry. Yeah. OK, any anyone else on it? Kelly or Minister Skilton, any input on where are the opportunities and where are the gaps in the industry in terms of tapping into this segment? I know you're already doing a lot, but any ideas? Welcome. Sure, share. I can share, share that as we wrap up. <laughs> sure, I can share my my point of view there. I I think you know, if, it can, if we can focus it as an opportunity, I also see that because we're talking about the discerning traveler, uh, I think we are looking into creating content that inspires also. Um, and uh, we're working in one of these communities um, also to create content that is based on some of the ancestral traditions and the, and the myths. For example, there is a myth of a hero that that listens to the um, to the cry of Mother Earth when humanity was being, um, you know, we're, we're deviating from the path that their gods had originally uh, set for them, and we had forgotten our reason why we were on Earth. Uh, and the hero has to fight to uh, to reestablish, let's say, the equilibrium of, of Mother okay. Earth. So we're with this type of content now we're looking to see how, based on these ancestral traditions, how we can inspire uh, the certain travelers. So we believe that's uh, an opportunity to innovate and to uh, stand out positively. That's great. So, um, Kelly, any thoughts? Or, and actually, uh, you know, Mr. Skilson, you might want to look into, into the, the group of conscious travelers that Kelly has <laughs> right under her, her organization. It sounds like a great combo there. Kelly? Definitely, yeah. I think I, I know we're running out of time, so I'll, I'll keep my comments brief. Um, but I think the two themes that are really top of mind for me are opening doors for collaboration. Um, there's a lot that's out there. There's a lot of really fantastic, especially grassroots movements and um, people who have traditionally been underrepresented in the industry that are um, out there and eager to collaborate. And so just opening the doors for those collaborations can speed up innovation. Um, and then in addition to that, really just reshaping the narrative around sustainable tourism. There's so many misconceptions around it um, and finding opportunities. Um, so often we talk about it as responsible or ethical travel, which is 
um, fine, but honestly, not that inspiring. Um, so finding ideas to reshape it and really say, here's the best type of travel, no matter where you're going or what your budget looks like or what your travel style is, here's an opportunity to protect the planet and to connect with locals and to have a better time while you're doing it and really tackling onto that and finding more and more opportunities to incorporate sustainability across the board because it really should be the norm. Completely agree and such a great place to end on such an inspiring note. Thank you so much, Minister Skilson, Lola and Kelly for joining us today. We're excited to see what you get up to in the year ahead. Happy holidays. Thank you, Lily.